The other night, I stumbled downstairs in the dark and kicked my wife's sewing basket from the halfway landing. Needles, spools, buttons, and patches scattered. In gathering the things up, I came upon my grandmother's thimble. For a second, I did not know what it was. A stemless chalice of silver weighing a fraction of an ounce had come into my fingers. Then I knew, and the valves of time parted, and after an interval of years, my grandmother was upon me again, and it seemed incumbent upon me, necessary and holy, to tell how once there had been a woman who now was no more, how she had been born and lived in a world that had ceased to exist, though its mementos were all about us, how her thimble had been fashioned as if in a magical grotto in the black mountain of time, by workmen dwarfed by remoteness, in a vanished workshop now no larger than the thimble itself, and like it, soon doomed, as if by geological pressures, to be crushed out of shape. O oh Lord, bless these poor paragraphs that would do in their vile ignorance your work of resurrection. John Updike was born in 1932 in Shillington, Pennsylvania. He graduated from Harvard in 1954 and for two years was a member of the staff of The New Yorker. His novel, The Centaur, received the National Book Award for Fiction in 1964. His other works include the novels The Poor House Fair, Rabbit Run, and Of the Farm, several collections of short stories, two volumes of verse, and a book of parodies and essays. He lives in Ipswich, Massachusetts. No, I've never been able to, to do much with, with this town, although I've lived here now for nine years, and uh, uh, it certainly should be part of my fiber. Uh, maybe if I move, I can see it, uh, see it small enough and sharp enough to, to want to write about it. When did you decide to become a writer? I'd always wanted to do something, uh, as they say, creative. It seemed like a uh, one way to make a living that didn't uh, necessarily inflict pain on other people. You were bringing something into the world instead of uh, really competing for what was already there. And uh, as to the seriousness, uh, I just wanted to push uh, my abilities as far as as far as they would go and uh, hence the seriousness I guess I'm really a pretty serious uh, fellow although uh, I hadn't thought of myself like that for quite a while but the writing is uh, I think it's often kind of funny although other people tell me my writing is depressing most of your uh, writing thus far has been concerned with Olinger Pennsylvania how and when did you start writing about that? It wasn't until I moved up here that uh, I began to write the uh, the Olinger stories, so-called. The, the name was uh, given in a quite a small story about grade school students in which the teacher uh, uh, rebukes a girl by saying, you're not in Baltimore, Joan, you're in Olinger, PA. And... Uh, since I have trouble inventing names, uh, and any time I invent anything that sounds right, I kind of hang on to it. I have put a lot of stories in in Olinger. Uh, I came from a town called Shillington, and there probably is some connection. Uh, as to what Olinger is, I guess it's a kind of a, a state of mind having to do with uh, a town that isn't much of anything. That is, it's neither big nor not really small. It's neither rural nor urban. It's uh, neither here nor there, in a sense. It's... Uh, it's a site of joy uh, that is this middle point, this, uh, this mediocrity is a kind of blessed uh, condition uh, from which, alas, one can only, uh, can only decline, so that the Olinger stories uh, represent a kind of par paradise, but um, thinking them over now in my head, I realize it's a, uh, a sort of a torn, a torn paradise even then. Are your earlier stories really concerned with growing up in America? 
There's a great deal said in American fiction about growing up, and it's presented in some sort of moral terms. I, I think that moral, moralism is one of the, uh, the curses of fiction, and, and it sounds sticky when you say about growing up, because it implies that it's a good thing to do. Uh, I'm not sure it's a good thing to do. It's a necessary, it's an inevitable thing that's done to you. And uh, so the stories, uh, the older the hero gets, the sadder, in a way, they uh, they seem to be. Um, the stories are about loss, I'd say, more than more than gain. Uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, the uh, the hero, the sort of many-faced hero of those stories, doesn't seem to enjoy being grown up as much as he might, and looks back to. Uh, to this time when everything was a little bigger than uh, a little bigger than reality and somehow charged with a kind of preciousness a kind of a kind of importance i i was raised among quite witty people who uh, who talked about themselves and each other all the time so that there was generated in the household a kind of running mythology uh, which i've drawn upon and really it's no invention of mine it it, it uh, uh, but I've been the one, the witness, who who's tried to write a little of it down. But the, 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 all four adults in that house that I grew up charged uh, their very quiet lives, really, with a kind of drama, suspense. Uh, they were Bible readers, uh, spe uh, especially my grandfather and uh, my mother. And uh, uh, there was something of, of viewing their lives as an as an unfolding book, as a, as a scroll that was being rolled out and constantly examining it for significance, for turns, for God's fingerprints, for, uh, uh, well, it just somehow was very exciting. <laughs> Different things move us. I am always affected, reassured, nostalgically pleased, even as a member of my animal species made proud by the sight of bare earth that has been smoothed and packed firm by the passage of human feet. Such spots abound in small towns, the furtive break in the playground fence dignified into a thoroughfare, the trough of dust underneath each swing, the blurred path worn across a wedge of grass, the anonymous little mound or embankment polished by play and strewn with pebbles like the confetti aftermath of a wedding. Such unconsciously humanized intervals of clay, too humble and common even to have a name, remind me of my childhood, when one communes with dirt down among the legs, as it were, of presiding fatherly presences. The earth is our playmate then, and the call to supper has a piercingly sweet eschatological ring. <laughs> Wait. Without life, you have nothing, and, and uh, I don't think that uh, the biochemistry of fiction quite permits, permits us to create life out of, out of uh, components. Rather, rather uh, it's, it's a more uh, religious thing of, of listening uh, for, for voices and letting something take over a little bit. Um, this may seem strange coming from me because uh, I fear that my prose gives the impression of having been rather thoroughly considered, um, but uh, what of it lives for me uh, 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 has somehow happened sort of all of, in, a, in a rush and uh, all at once, out of, out of whatever uh, stew is brewing. In. I thought, having so many children, that I should be uh, in some way writing uh, for them. I, I can't escape the impression that, uh, of the many books they have, my own are among the, uh, the ones that bore the most. Uh, it, it may well be that I don't have the, uh, the knack. Uh, having children doesn't make you an expert on them, and I, I sort of have had to draw on my memories of childhood. Do you consider that the domestic scene is a particular area for your writing? Uh, I, I, th I think more happens in the home than uh, uh, than is generally known, and uh, 
since uh, the American culture, for better or worse, seems to be increasingly home-centered, it certainly is a, an area to be explored. Uh, I think uh, uh, that something quite intricate uh, and uh, fierce occurs in homes and uh, it's worth while to try to trace uh, some of the uh, some of the interlockings the uh, the mutual damages and the the metamorphoses that people in conjunction bring about with each other uh, but I like to write stories out of the home too. I, I think one trouble with with most of uh, with a lot of American fiction, uh, perhaps including mine, is that it all tends to take place indoors. Uh, reading reading uh, "Letting Go" by Philip Roth, it's terribly indoors kind of book. You know, you just never, and you begin to really lust for a little fresh air. From little on up, I, I had the impression that the American middle class was somehow more interesting than, than uh, it was being given credit for. The, there's a kind of pain and a kind of surprisingness that I felt surrounding me as a child that uh, I wished to depict, to deliver. One is accused by critics of uh, not having enough to say, and in a way, I at least don't have any slogan to impart, but I do feel uh, uh, pregnant with an almost unsayable intuition about the changing or perhaps decaying uh, middle class. I like on Peter Pan that boy that was going, Do you really think you're Peter Pan? I think what's going to happen is you... No? What's going to happen? Good. <laughs> Life, for me at least, uh, has a kind of uh, yes but quality. Uh, it's constantly hovering around the middle. Uh, for every toothache, there's a, a sugar drop. For every uh, a knock, you know, there's a kiss. So, to capture in some kind of full honesty this, this um, well-muddled, sacred mediocrity of, of life uh, has been productive of, of stories. Telephone poles. They have been with us a long time. They will outlast the elms. Our eyes like the eyes of a savage sipping the trees in his search for game, run through them. They blend along small town streets like a race of giants that have faded into mere mythology. Our eyes, washed clean of belief, lift incredulous to their fearsome crowns of bolts, trusses, struts, nuts, insulators, and such barnacles as compose these weathered encrustations of electrical debris, each a gorgon's head, which, seized right, could stun us to stone. You mentioned that there is a contrast of moral alternatives in your novels Rabbit Run and The Centaur. Could you explain that? The uh, two books were conceived, as I said, as, uh, as uh, two sides of one coin, the coin being roughly the bond uh, between Morality felt or seen or understood as as a set of of uh, social laws which protect us from each other. A Sant Santiana somewhere speaks of uh, behind all the biblical injunctions stands the specter of pain, uh, and uh, so in a sense, morality is what uh, tries to keep us, uh, protects us from pain. Uh, the other uh, kind of morality is a sort of response to, uh, to uh, an inner imperative. Rabbit, in brief, uh, takes the inner imper imper imperative as the, uh, as the index, and uh, as a rabbit, he's uh, uh, fertile and quick and evasive. 
Caldwell, the horse, uh, takes duty, takes society, uh, lives for others in a way, uh, uh, plods, plods on uh, like a horse. I didn't see either solution as being perfect. Uh, indeed, it's a mistake, I think, to look uh, in books, or at least in my books, for a finished uh, message. Well, just in describing, uh, however badly, the, uh, the idea behind Rabbit Run and the Centaur, uh, I've indicated that I am uh, uh, concerned with uh, uh, moral issues in a way. Uh, I don't try to write pro propaganda. I was raised as a Lutheran and uh, I'm a member now of a church that's burned down. Uh, the con congregational church in town. Uh, clearly, it does uh, it does interest me. Ministers uh, jump in and out of uh, of my books. Uh, opinions vary as to whether they're treated sympathetically or uh, or satirically, and I, I don't really know. I, I uh, I'm fascinated by the figures of ministers because here you have a man who's being paid and who's investing his entire life and doing something that would seem to uh, doing something quite invisible in a way. Um, uh, the few ministers I've known, uh, I think they they exist on the frontier, uh, the frontier of real problems, of, of real issues. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced, uh, or rather I sometimes wonder if, if fiction itself, at least as we understand it uh, uh, as it's evolved uh, since uh, uh, 1730 uh, isn't rather intimately wed to, to the Christian faith. And if the Christian faith vanishes, if indeed, uh, if indeed fiction as we understand it won't vanish also, that is, aren't the, aren't the novels. And indeed, even the movies, the 20th century movies, in some way, um, they inculcate, they inculcate the idea that, that there is a justice, uh, uh, that things balance out, uh, that there are evil deeds, and in short, a whole, a whole set of notions that, that may be uh, dispensable, that may be erroneous. Uh, but to those of us uh, in the trade, something in the very grain of, of fiction, as we understand it, I think compels us to consider the kind of problems that ministers must deal with, even if we don't do it from uh, a ministerial angle, uh, exactly. So that I don't feel religion is pasted on or, or uh, shoehorned into uh, my books. Uh, it, it fights its way in, and uh, uh, I really, uh, if anything, try to keep it, uh, keep it out. Do you consider yourself a traditional novelist? My instinct is to, uh, is to cry out, no. Uh, I'm not sure I really understand the tradition, but no, I, I think that would be a terrible thing to be. Um, uh, I consider myself an experimental novelist. Uh, I think that the novel form is uh, worn out, in a way, uh, uh, as far as many of the things we traditionally expect from novels. And uh, I think that the French, uh, Robrier and Natalie Sarot, in theorizing about, uh, about the novel, are, are doing the correct thing. I, I think it's a pity that there's so little, there's so much journalistic prattle about the novel in this country and so little real, real thought about what fiction can do um, uh, to instruct and delight men. I, I, th I think that... Uh, uh, somehow, uh, well, I don't quite uh, know how to do it, that novels could be shaped differently. I, I can see novels that would be shaped like, like flowers or like explosions or like, uh, like Mobius strips. To begin a book at all, you have to have some feeling for the kind of object you're going to produce. And uh, a book is, among other things, a physical object, and this should have a certain, I think, objective shape in the mind uh, so that... Uh, the reader indeed remembers it. Uh, uh, the shape of those two books is, as uh, as you say, Rabbit Run was a kind of uh, pattern of Z's, and the centaur was a sort of a sandwich, 
with the mythological and realistic levels alternating, uh, but somewhat unexpectedly. That is, uh, uh, you use this uh, initial image uh, merely as a starting point for further variations uh, to get a, a full uh, a full weave. Uh, my last novel, a rather short one called uh, Of the Farm, was. Uh, conceived of as a kind of an X, a kind of a trade uh, between the mother and son, uh, whereby the, uh, uh, the second wife equaled the farm, and uh, the acquisition of either involved, uh, involved some, uh, some breakage in other lives, so that uh, a swap was how I saw the book. Uh, the first novel, the... Uh, the Poor House Fair was uh, conceived of as a mounting of tension which then would dissipate of a kind of uh, gladiola shape, perhaps. Uh, a, uh, uh, it had something to do with, uh, with the stoning of uh, St. Stephen in the, uh, in, in the Bible. But no, I suppose a, a fireworks would be a better description of the shape that I wanted that novel to have. Uh, my fear is that in the end, this initial shape doesn't matter to uh, anybody except maybe the author. There are a lot of things that are in books because it enables the author to write them, and the reader probably gets a sort of different, uh, a different impression. <laughs> a rack of paperbacks. Gateway, Grove, and Dover say, Unamuno, any day. Beacon press and torchlight chorus. Kierkegaard does nicely for us. Willie, Whaley, Anchor, Bleats. Auden, Barzen, Kazen, Keats. Tovey, Glover, Cohen, Fry is Meridian's reply. Bentley's best brags drama books. Harvest, Burgeons, Cleanth, Brooks. All including Sentinel, Jaco, Mako, Arco, Dell. Noonday, Vintage, Living Age, Mentor, Wisdom, Page on Page of Classics, Much. Too little known when books were big and binding sewn. Agree. Lord Ragland, Margaret Mead, Moses Haddis, Herbert Reed, the Panchatantra, Hampson's Pan, Tillich, Ill, Khalil Gibran, and Henry James sell better if their spines are not austerely stiff. How would you define good writing? I see good good writing really in in moral terms of of honesty. Uh, there are many many ways to write well, and only one way to write badly. And the way to write badly really is to be dishonest. And and uh, it's amazing to me that there is so much bad writing because it really is a little harder to do than to write well. I think <laughs> that is it's a little more work to write badly. It requires one extra step, the step of of being dishonest. And, uh, I think that, uh, that uh, bad writing uh, is, of which no one is guiltless, uh, is, is writing which a certain laziness, a certain, a certain loss of vision has taken place. That is, you cease to see the thing, the, the person, the feeling, the action, uh, Aristotle uh, said, uh, and, and let the words take over the words other people wrote, the words that once once were alive but aren't, aren't now. Critics talk a good deal about the influence of one writer upon another. Uh, you've mentioned your liking for Proust. Uh, can you say how his writings have influenced or have been of utility to you? Uh, I suppose what I was impressed by uh, in Proust was the, uh, the way he took a thing further than I thought it could be taken. That is, he took a certain kind of precision and a certain kind of uh, floral fancy further than I would have otherwise known was possible. And uh, it seemed to me that Proust in this way penetrated more deeply into um, the nature of things, the interrelations of things and, and uh, their tone, their musical tone, as it were, uh, than, than anything I'd read in the 19th century. Uh, so that my feeling, um, apart from all the feelings of delight and awe and terror that any reader gets, is one of seeing an actual te technical lesson, uh, uh, just as a 
scientist must uh, must be grateful for for some new insights. Uh, uh, so you feel here that that something has been pushed rather than it's gone before. As a professional writer, you're uh, obliged to turn out uh, saleable material to uh, command invention, as it were. Uh, do you find that an awkward position? <coughs> it is a little embarrassing to make your living by writing. It's it's a little like making it by sleeping or um, uh, juggling or, or anything else that, that uh, uh, perhaps uh, someone, uh, I'm trying to think who, uh, Belloc, I guess. Belloc, who was a, a real professional, who produced as many as eight and nine books a year, said that the misery of being a professional writer is that writing was never meant to be a living at all, <laughs> a way of making a living. It was, uh, it, it's, a, it's meant to be a hobby or, or it's a luxury. Uh, the society is sufficiently affluent that it that it uh, seems to want lux luxuries of all sort and 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 uh, is uh, is willing to support you perhaps uh, you feel additionally guilty about making a living at it uh, because so many of the best 20th century writers did not make a living at it and uh, it may well be that a condition of really uh, good writing is that it doesn't sell, since writing, for which is any kind of market, means writing uh, that is not breaking wholly new ground. Um, these are all discouraging thoughts, uh, uh, especially uh, for me, who, ha who have managed to, uh, to eke out a living. The whole appetite for fiction is a little mysterious. Uh, uh, what is it that made the uh, cavemen entranced by the storyteller? Uh, what need does a story satisfy? Why, why do so many people who could use the time uh, sleeping or uh, uh, playing golf uh, read? Uh, uh, I, there must be some kind of, of very deep, deep uh, human curiosity that, that makes us all um, susceptible to stories. <laughs> as long as the need exists, uh, I think there will be people who, who will try to satisfy it and be somewhat paid for their good work. This is NET, the National Educational Television Network.